Hello teachers, this lesson summary is about Romans session number 6. Uh, the text involved is Romans 6, 1 through 14. Um, I started the lesson by talking about birthdays and uh, I just came out of February and the beginning of March, which uh, at, the, at the Jennings house is birthday month. It's my birthday, Milana's birthday, um, Zeke's birthday is at the beginning of March and so it's kind of just a season of that. Um, the Bible talks about being born again and having a spiritual birthday. And just like our physical birthday, um, there's a lot of things that are based on the fact that you were born. <laughs> that there's a time where you, um, because of your conception, you came into the world. And uh, so everything that happens in your life has to have that happen first. And it's the same thing here in the book of Romans. Paul's been talking about justification justification by faith that we're made right with god uh by faith uh, jesus said to nicodemus remember there in john 3 verily verily i say unto you, you must be born again unless a man is born of water and, a, and of spirit he cannot see the kingdom of god a lot of amazing things happen to us when we get saved we're reconciled to god uh, we're indwelled by the holy spirit we go from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. Um, a, a lot of things happen. We're declared righteous. We're justified um, by our faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and so we talk so much about the birth, the, the what happens when we get saved or how we are saved, that uh, Paul begins to, here in Romans, kind of foresee maybe an argument that people would make. And that is, if you're saved by faith, if you believe God, then it then only really the birth matters, and then how you live after the birth doesn't matter. And and of course, that couldn't be further from the truth. The the real uh, you know passion or theme of this lesson is that not only are we uh, saved by faith, but we're also sanctified by faith. That means we grow in our in righteousness. Um, grow in our relationship with God by faith. And so um, that really is kind of the, the theme of the lesson, that there's freedom in Christ to obey Christ and to do the right thing for those of us who know Christ as our Savior. And so here's the big idea. We can experience freedom in Christ by living out belief in three realities. There are three realities that Paul talks about here that we summarize um, as, as in different sections of these verses to help us uh, think through what it looks like to be sanctified after we're saved. Uh, that is to, to grow in Christ's likeness after that we've uh, been declared righteous, been justified by faith. The first reality is uh, covers verses 1 through 7. The first reality, reality number one, is I am dead to sin. Um, Paul, of course, sees an argument that's being made in verse 1 where I'm about to sneeze, uh, excuse me about that, but he says in verse one, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The idea there is, well, if we're just, if we're justified by faith in God, and I believe that Jesus is the one and only uh, son of God that came and died on the cross for our sins, and I've re repented and put my trust in him, then God forgives my sin and gives me a home in heaven. I'm made right with God. And so maybe the argument could be made, or some might propose, that if I'm good at sinning and God is good at forgiving, then we've got a great par partnership. If God's, if, if more grace is a good thing, then maybe my sin produces more of God's grace, and therefore we've got this great partnership. And he says, so should we continue in sin? Should we keep doing the wrong thing so that God could just keep giving grace and giving grace and giving grace? Um, is that what God desires? And he says there in verse 2, God forbid, a, a more literal translation would be, may it never be. Of course, this is not the way God intended it. He says this, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Basically, Paul's making the argument that um, those who uh, think that way are ignoring a reality. And the reality that comes uh, as a result of being justified by faith is that now you and I, who know Christ as Savior, we are dead to sin. That's what he says in verse 3. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from dead by the glory of the Father, 
Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in, likeness, in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of our resurrection. So the idea is he says baptism, of course, physical baptism is a picture of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And when we are baptized, we are picturing Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Um, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. The water's not doing that. Jesus already did it. This is just a public declaration of that. But those of us who get saved, we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, now this means that we, we were planted together with Christ in his death and raised in his resurrection. So he says verse in verse number 6, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead, that is dead to sin, is freed from sin. So he's saying if we died with Christ and we're alive in this new creation, then we are dead to sin. When people accept Jesus, they identify with his death and are no longer slaves to sin. That doesn't mean that we don't sin ever. We're still going to sin. It means that we don't have to serve sin anymore. That sin no longer has to have dominion over us and doesn't have dominion over us. So the first reality is that we don't have to be enslaved to sin, that we can be dead to sin, and that we are dead to sin when we know Christ as Savior. The reality number two is this, I am alive in Christ. Um, in verse 8, he goes on to say, um, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death no more has dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth, unto God. And I love this verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. If Christ is dead to death, meaning death does no longer have dominion over him, he doesn't have to worry about death anymore because he's been raised. He's conquered death. In the same way, he says, in the, in the same way, you need to consider yourself dead to sin. And he uses that word reckon. Legizomai, I believe, is how you say the Greek word. It's an accounting word. It means to consider, to a take an account. Um, in the lesson, I, I put the Strong's Concordance uh, definition in there um, that says basically to take an accounting of and come to a conclusion. He says you need to reckon yourself dead to sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means in the moment of temptation, when um, you're having to make it a choice, Consider yourself, reckon yourself, account, do the accounting and say, Christ died for this. Christ's Holy Spirit lives in me. Um, I don't have to serve sin anymore. And so you're reckoning yourself dead to sin and alive to Christ. And so that is the second reality. The first reality is that we're dead to sin. The second reality is that we're alive in Christ, that Christ can live his life through us uh, and help us to conquer sin in our lives. Once that happens, we have this third reality, that is that we are a tool of righteousness or an instrument of righteousness. The third reality is that we are a tool of righteousness. Paul says in verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. If you are um, dead to sin and alive in Christ, then make sure you don't let sin reign. Don't let sin have control if you're dead to it and alive to Christ. You don't have to let it reign in your body. Instead, verse 13, neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but yield yourself to God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you not, are not under the law, but under grace. Paul is making the case that if you are dead to sin and you are alive to Christ, then we need to not let sin reign. It doesn't have to be in control anymore. We're dead to it. We can let Christ reign in us, the Holy Spirit uh, reign in us. We, um, When we get saved, we're dwelt by the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're not a, you're not a believer. Um, if you are a believer, you have the Holy Spirit. But we don't always allow the Holy Spirit to have control, even though we're indwelt by him. We can grieve the Holy Spirit of God because he's living in a body uh, that he can't leave. And sometimes in that body, we do make 
ourselves uh, um, the slave of sin instead of the slave of Christ, slave of the Spirit. And so Paul says, make a conscious decision. Reckon yourself as dead to sin. Reckon yourself as alive to God. And then give over your body as an instrument unto God to do the right thing rather than the wrong thing, to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. Um, the, one of the things uh, God said, Jesus said in John, I believe it's 15, is talking about abiding. If you abide in me and I abide in you, my words abide in you, you'll bear much fruit. And I, I believe that part of uh, reckoning ourselves dead to sin, alive to God, and yielding our members over to Christ is to dwell with Christ, to get in his word, to spend time with him, um, to pray uh, to God and, and um, make ourselves available to letting him fill us. The word of God and the Holy Spirit of God uh, conform, conforming our, our mind and our body to that um, will then allow us to live out what the spirit wants us to do there's a connection to being filled with this with being filled with the spirit and uh, uh, letting the word of God dwell in us richly in all wisdom and so um, we need to yield ourselves uh, consider ourselves as instruments of righteousness to God because of the salvation that's been provided to us uh, in Christ Jesus uh, these are really practical things uh, I think uh, as I said in the lesson something that should be on our lips as we face temptation every day is I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that sin. I'm alive to God. God, help me in the moment of sin to be alive to you. Let me yield my my body, not as instruments to do wrong, but let me make the daily choice to yield myself over to doing the right thing. Hey, I'm praying for you. I care about you. Hope you do a great job um, and that you're really impacted by the Word of God as you study this week and as you deliver your lesson on Sunday. Have a great day.